Man, Miami Heat. What a letdown, man. You know what's funny? I, I was actually thinking about going to that game. I'm like, it's Eastern Conference Finals. Uh, it's at the crib. It's game seven, so it's all or nothing. So it's going to be crazy hype there. I know the energy was going to be wild. But then I looked at those ticket prices, and I was like, ah, okay. This is why it remained just that, a thought. So we, we watch it from home. It was, it was a good game. Um, I just felt like the, the Heat, they just needed somebody else other than Jimmy Butler. I felt like Jimmy Butler was doing his thing. Struess was, uh, and Lowry was, uh. <laughs> but, but yeah, man, hey, and it kind of reminded me of a different team that we like to talk about. But anyway, team keep it clean. What's going on? It's St. Graven here with another video and some great, great, great news. Let's just hear it directly from the man himself. The conversation we were just having, you said you were telling Jim Harbaugh about our guy yes, T.O. over here. I think that well, he hasn't talked to him yet. But well, said, he's but about to. So I'll be back in the building on Tuesday. Ooh. And I'm spitting facts. T.O. ready to play ball. This one right here? Or that one? Whichever one. <laughs> T.O. ready to play ball, baby. He, he got the passion. He got the leadership for sure. And he got the skills, baby. So, any. All 32, man. Take a shot on T.O. Wow. Okay. Now, Marcus Peters, sound, he said he got the passion and he could play ball. It sounded like he was talking about himself uh, and the leadership as well. Um, but Marcus Peters, he confirmed that he will be back tomorrow. He'll be at OTAs, back with the Ravens tomorrow. And that's great news. I think Mar uh, Marlon Humphrey, he said something about it last week in his presser. But that's a, a, a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing because y'all know how much we missed Marcus Peters badly last year. <laughs> I mean, they missed everybody badly last year, but Mar oh, Marcus Peters, they missed him badly, man. I think on the defense, he was probably the, the person that the Ravens missed the most. Um, now, real quick, that was a clip from Fan Control Football. So one of the things that I appreciated the most is two things. One thing I appreciated and one thing I did not appreciate about that clip. The thing I appreciated is Marcus Peters. And you know Marcus Peters, when he talks, he just talks, he does his thing, and he be letting it fly. But for, in fan control football, they be letting it fly on there. They be doing some stuff on there like that quarterback. The dude scored a touchdown, and then he just starts smoking right after that. I'm like, what, really? And they be doing all kind of stuff on there. Um, but so with Marcus Peters, the fact that he kept it clean. And I, and I was like, okay. Well, at least in that clip. I didn't see the whole interview. But the fact that he kept it clean in that clip, I'm like, all right, MP, I can actually play a full Marcus Peters clip on the chat. Oh, I appreciate that. And I ain't got to edit nothing out? Oh, yeah, let's go. But the thing that I did not appreciate that actually has me a little worried is that Marcus Peters was lobbying for Terrell Owens to get signed. And I think is is it Charlie Cast? I know I, f I forget what her name is. I know it's Charlie something, but and, and she called John Harbaugh, Jim Harbaugh. It, it happens all the time. It ain't a big deal. Um, but with Marcus Peters saying that, I just hope the Ravens didn't hit it. I, I hope I hope that doesn't end up being a veteran receiver that they signed. It being To because you know Ray Ravens will be like, oh oh To want to play? Oh yeah, oh, cool. let's see if we can get some good years out of him. Anyway, um, Marcus Peters being back, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I think, and I'm sure a lot of y'all will agree, Marcus Peter easily, easily, ever since he's been on the Baltimore Ravens, he has been one of my favorite uh, players on the team. Easily. Marcus Peters, um, and this is before he even steps on the football field, what be getting me. Uh, because his, his, his passion, um, his, his energy, uh, just his vibe, man. He is just, um, and he's somebody that they, they just keep it, they, they keep it so real all the time. And, and I appreciate that about his, his, his character, uh, his personality. And that dude, and then of course on the field, oh yeah, he, he, he brings it too. Marcus Peters, um, he's known as a hothead. But it's, just, it's really passion, man. He's very passionate. And he takes what he does seriously uh, with Marcus Peters. It's one thing about him, um, if he's having a good game, then y'all know Marcus Peters will be all in your face. He'll be doing all the clapping and all that stuff, and he'll be talking his trash. If he's having a bad game, that, that passion, it could backfire a little bit because he will just, you can tell that he is frustrated, uh, and it'll get to him. 
But that that's that's just his personality. That's part of it. So you obviously hope that he has more good games than bad ones, and he usually does. But yeah, man, Ravens they they missed him really bad last year, last se- ooh, last season. Um, yeah. Again, I, I think out of all the defensive players that Ravens lost, I mean, they lost really the whole team, but out of all the defensive players that they lost, I think Marcus Peters was certainly the, the, the biggest one and the one that impacted them on defense the most. Um, Marcus Peters, he makes Marlon Humphrey's job a lot easier. Um, he makes really a lot of people's job a lot easier. Uh, but him and Marlon Humphrey, they're, they, they're like a nice – one two punch they complement each other because marlon humphrey he plays the receiver marcus peters he plays the ball um so they got completely different styles but it works it works um and now you throw kyle fuller in there um and kyle fuller he ain't got to be the greatest there ain't nobody asking him to do that they just hey when your number's called just be solid be ready stay ready so you ain't gotta get ready um, Brandon Stevens, physical guy. Um, so it's it's gonna be. I just I really hope that they just stay healthy. That's the biggest thing, man. I mean that that is the biggest thing. I hope that the the whole team could stay healthy because this roster again, this roster. You look around at this roster, it's like oh 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 wow oh my yeah, like all all around. Well, except in one position, but and and you know what, Ravens mess around. They they probably will add to you. They probably will. Um, but I'm joking, by the way, because I know it's going to be somebody. The Ravens aren't going to add to you. What are you talking about, man? Relax, please. Um, but yeah, Mar- Marcus Peters, I-, I just I just always remember uh, last year, right before his, the, the day before his injury. He And uh, timing is just, uh, it's everything. It could be so frustrating. It could be great. It could be sad. It could be a lot of things, but it is everything. Um, but he had a presser. And I'll talk to y'all about this press. We did a video about the press. And when he spoke, it was just, it was um, my favorite presser from him because it was just really, it was just real, man. That's the best word to describe it. It was just real. Uh, He spoke about growing up. He spoke about uh, kids, children and stuff. Uh, He spoke about, he spoke about football, but it was more about off the field stuff. And you could just feel it. I, I remember listening to it, watching. I'm like, man, my eyes start getting watery and stuff. I'm like, man, like this dude, like he's saying some stuff, man. And then that's what made his injury that much worse because literally the very next day, the very next day, I remember, uh, I remember getting the getting the notification, and it was like, oh, um, hear, hearing that Marcus Peters and Gus Edwards tore their ACLs. On the same day, that's what, that's what people were here said that. Oh, we we heard it, we heard it, we heard it. Possible, we're fearing, fearing that Marcus Peters and Gus Edwards both tore their ACL. I was like, no, nah. nah. I was like, man, nah. Say this ain't so, man. Say it ain't so, man. And then about may, maybe thirty minutes later, after that, that report came out. The one that confirmed it did, and I was like, man. Hmm. And again, both at the same time. I mean, the whole season was like a punch in the gut with the injuries, but those both happening at the same time. Mm, mm, mm. And then uh, I think it was late on uh, in like training camp or something, um, or in, in the practice. Justice Hill just randomly boom. Oh, he tore his ACL or his Achilles, whichever one it was. And then, of course, in preseason, that, the, the third game of the preseason, first drive, first drive on that screenplay. Mm. And maybe that's why Ravens, they didn't run screens like that because they were like, man, Bradley Bozeman, you missing blocks on screen like this? Bozeman missed that block. And it's not Bozeman's fault that J.K. Knee got, like, I mean, his ACL got popped, but, man, it's just, it was, it was ugly, man. It was ugly. Um, but yeah, that's probably that's probably why Ravens like you know, he ain't running no screenplays after that. They got scarred, man, scarred, 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 scarred. Oh wow! Sorry, man. I just was going down memory lane with all the injuries last year, specifically to the running backs. But Marcus Peters, man, but it, it, him being back, um, it just brings so much life to this team, man. 
it brings so much life to the defense. I um, they, the Ravens could use somebody like that on offense. Some, they could really use somebody like that on offense. Somebody who going to talk that talk, um, but is ready to back it up too. Uh, somebody who's a leader. Um, cause they got, they obviously got leaders. Rashad Bateman looking like he getting ready to step up. Uh, Lamar Jackson, but they, they, they different kind of leaders. Uh, and we'll, we'll actually see what Rashad Bateman does. Cause this will really be his year to show like, all right, Hey, I, I, I'm with it. Um, and Lamar Jackson, he's more of a, uh, he's more of a quiet leader. He's more of a quiet guy, but I feel like Ravens need that guy that, that's going to run his mouth on offense. There's going to be a hype man on, sort of like Mark Ingram was. Mark Ingram was that guy, that, that leader who, but he could still play too. That first year he could still play, but he could still play. Once he got that, once he got the injury uh, at the end of the season, um, that, that was it for him, man. It just, everything just like slowed down. But at the same time, I don't know, man, because remember um, he got the injury. So he was injured for the playoffs and they was like, you know what? Mark Ingram's injury. We're not using Gus Edwards. Forget that guy. Uh, but anyway, the following year, um, so it looked like he was still dealing with the injury. But then, um, and some people thought he was dealing with the injury like all oh, year. Then he went to the Texans and he looked refreshed. He went to the Texans and he looked refreshed. It was like, oh, oh okay, well, whatever. Anyway, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, man, uh, mm, it is what it is. So anyway, Mark. <laughs> Oh, Marcus Peters is back. Um, so yeah, man, Ravens defense, they 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 need it. But yeah, they still need that guy like that, in my opinion. I, I feel like uh having that guy like that on offense, it could take them uh, a long way. Cause you see what happened when they missed that guy on defense. It brought them down a lot. And I mean there's a lot of other things too, a lot of other factors and whatnot. But having him back, it, it just it, it means the world to this team because Marcus Peters is a dog. He is a dog, and Ravens, they, they could use all the dogs that they could possibly get.